you know why I'm smiling. Hello everyone and welcome to another video today. We're talking about the GT420, dankest card on the planet from NVIDIA. With the world's shortest introduction out the way there, let's talk about availability. Listings for a used GT420 on eBay UK are few and far between. In fact, at the time of this video, there are currently none for sale. On eBay US, however, well, expect to pay a premium. Over $100 in some cases for a GPU that's over 8 years old, and not a very good one at that. Based on the GF108 architecture, the GT420 is essentially a cut-down GT730, featuring just 48 processor cores as opposed to the fully unlocked 730's 96. The 420 comes in both a 1 or 2 gig variant, with the 1 gig card usually selling for a little less. The high prices, in some instances, can be explained by the fact that this graphics card is or was an OEM part, or original equipment manufacturer. This means it wasn't introduced as a separate retail product and was only available as part of pre-built Dell or HP machines. At first, anyway, because it turns out Gigabyte and a few others later released retail versions of it. These are the ones that sell for significantly less on sites like eBay, but the OEM 420s retain a high price because they are end-of-life products, and therefore harder to find. Sellers know this, and know that if a company needs one for a specific computer system, they'll pay the premium. This low-end GPU is actually pretty boring when it comes down to it, but it does support DX11 and even DX12, so it can, in theory, run every game out there. But let's look into that. You see, on paper, the 420 sits between AMD's Radeon HD 5450 and HD 6450, two entry-level budget cards that are meant as either very low-end gaming solutions or just display adapters, so to speak. The HD 54 and 6450 are cards that are chosen by people who just need something to display a video output or want to get away with playing a few games. I know we've tested those two in the past and managed to squeeze fairly decent results out of them in some uh, easier to run titles. And of course I do love an old graphics card. The GT 420 then sitting in between the two will give you performance that's closer to the 5450 as opposed to its bigger brother, but here, starting off with GTA 5, we're still only seeing 25 frames per second. Interestingly, this does better than when I tested it with the HD 6450 a while ago, but we did have to turn everything down to low and run the game, of course, at 1280 by 720 or 720p resolution. All of the settings are also on normal here, and you can't really get away with turning anything up much more than that. The advanced graphical options are also set to off. Next up I decided to try the newest game on today's list, Rainbow Six Siege. Now this is a 2016 title, correct me if I'm wrong, and one that seems to have got better in terms of optimization over time. It runs pretty well on some lower end cards, and even on the GT420 we were able to at least start it up and run it, albeit with just 18 frames per second on average. Once again, like GTA 5, the game was running at 720p, and we had to adjust that resolution scale as well to ensure a smoother experience, though you're not going to exactly have a fantastic time with this card. Now, the level I played through here was just a lone wolf hostage rescue mission, so expect perhaps a few frames less if you do want to play online with this game and this GPU. Interestingly, the GT420 still isn't that cheap on used electronic sites like CEX here in the UK either, especially when compared to the prices of a used 6450 from AMD, for example. A card which you can still buy new, in fact. Now, we're going back a little bit in terms of time here, but Far Cry 3 was the next title. This is a slightly older game, of course, and even so, it could only run at 720p with the low settings, achieving 27 FPS on average. Far Cry 3 is one of those games that still looks good today, even when you do turn the settings on PC all the way down, and it's an absolute classic if you ask me. If you haven't played Far Cry 3 yet, give it a go, because it will run on some slightly lower end hardware now, considering the age of the game of course. In fact, I still regard this one as one of the best, if not the best, in the Far Cry series. But, I'm a little bit distracted from the overall point here. 
Performance on this card, as I said, 27 frames per second on average. It's an okay experience. You will sort of achieve and sort of exceed 30 frames per second in some instances, but more often than not, you'll probably spend most of your gaming time with this one hovering around the high 20s. But can it run Crisis? Well, absolutely. 34 FPS was the average here. We did have to turn things down once again to the low preset with 720p resolution. But all in all, the game was fairly playable and you won't see many dips below 30 frames per second unless you are, of course, under heavy fire, which, come to think of it, does happen quite a lot. So bear in mind that you will experience a few drops here and there when playing this one. Crisis came out in 2007, 11 years ago, and it's still pushing some hardware to its limits even today, especially if you have an entry-level graphics card in your system. And I think I made a video a while ago about Crisis uh, with regards to how it performs on some modern budget cards. So go and check that out if you have a bit of spare time. With Overwatch, the best way to play was to cap the frame rate at 30 FPS, turn the resolution down to 720p, and lower the render scale to 50%. So we're essentially running at half of 720p resolution here. What this does is it gives you a smooth 30 frames per second on average using this GPU. And the reason I capped the frame rate here was because it was rather jumpy if I didn't do so. We hovered around 30 frames per second anyway, but there were a few jumps above and a few drops below and I found capping that frame rate definitely made the whole experience a lot smoother. So there we have it, the GT420 from Nvidia sounds a lot more fun than it is. It really isn't a capable card and I don't think it ever has been, but just know that you should get away with playing some older titles on a GPU like this one, even though it's certainly not worth buying. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.